There is an important behavior that we need to address in order to understand how flex items behave with the margin property, specifically when a flex item has a margin value of auto. Applying a margin auto to a flex item will have a weird result if you don't know how it really works. That's why I believe you really need to understand what's going on. So let's see an example here. In our HTML document, we have a flex container and it is having just one child. And in the CSS, we gave to this container a display of flex, which means now it has become a flex container and its direct child is a flex item. Now look what happens if I target that specific element and give it a margin of auto. What just happened? Well, our element is centered horizontally and vertically. That's because when we set a value of auto to a flex item and there is free space, that extra free space has been distributed to the top, left, right, and bottom of the flex item. So, and here if we change the margin auto and say margin left auto, look what we have. Now the free space has been distributed to the left side of the flex item. Let's try margin top auto. So I think you got the idea. And now let's move to something that is more complicated. Here we have several flex items. You can make use of the margin auto property to create advanced layouts. For example, I want the first and the second flex items to be on the left side and the other flex items to be on the right side. With the margin auto property, this can be achieved easily. So let's target the second flex item and set its margin right property to auto. And now we have what we wanted. And now if I wanted the first, the second and the third flex items to be on the left side, instead of applying margin right auto to the second flex item, we target the third flex item and set its margin right value to auto. And now we have the desired effects.